And we're rejoined once again by Gary Tan, national swimming head coach. Before the interruption, Gary, you were telling us about how you plan to strategize uh, going forward with this yes. new appointment you have. Yeah, um, I, I mean, the fact is that uh, I bring a local flavor to it. And I think that having uh, been able to see myself, uh, me, me being a swimmer before and then now being a coach and then eventually hitting this, uh, the development of Singapore swimming, I think that is one thing that I can bring to the table to uh, empathize with the clubs of actually the current situation with COVID-19 as well ha that has caused the pipeline of swimmers to actually be diminished over a period of time as well. So right now, this is actually a very essential period where we need to have people who understand the local landscape and be able to actually lift the local landscape up into a different uh, into a different space as well and to be able to get the local swimmers and the pipeline swimmers to actually keep feeding the national training centre or, uh, or the national teams as well. Uh, Mr Tan, you talk about the current situation. Now, you have been open about your disappointment over our Singapore's performance in the Tokyo Olympics, uh, saying that, and you've also mentioned that the Olympics opened your eyes to the gulf currently between Singapore and other countries. Of course, Singapore is not like other countries. There are obvious cultural differences along, amongst many other differences that we can think of. But in your current position, which differences are worth your identifying and therefore addressing? I think the first thing that we want to probably address, I think, is is first getting the health, getting the health back of the clubs into a good space. Uh, like I mentioned before, I think I need them to be able to continue to be the pipeline towards our national teams. And then the, se the second part is actually addressing several issues where we talk about national service, the education side of it as well, understanding how we can actually work with the different ministries to be able to uh, come together and uh, you know, come up with a plan to be able to get the, the national swimmers to be able to train while they still serve the national service, and at the same time be able to uh, work with you know Ministry of Education to also work through the pipelines of what national school means as well as having more kids come through the, the sport as well. And so the encouragement of actually having younger children in that in to continue all the way into compared high high performance sports. Gary, we're just days away from the new year and you've got lots on your desk. You're going to be a very busy man. We've got these competitions coming up in, in the first few months of next year. Sea Games, Commonwealth Games, Asian Games as well. You are, you know, you've got, you've got, to, you've got more than enough to do. I mean, how are you going to rise to the challenge of, of these competitions that are coming up? Uh, you know, you, you nailed it on the head. I think it's it's actually a very complex year. 2021 uh, presented a lot of, uh, you know, uh, different scenarios for us. And I think everything has been piled up into 2022. Uh, you know, it's actually timely to, to actually find key competitions to work towards. And of course, the three major games, which is actually Sea Games, Commonwealth Games and Asian Games, is trying to identify the three and uh, which one is actually most important to us. But from my perspective, I do feel that the Asian Games bears a bigger res bigger scope for us as, as a team. And I think that we should aim towards that as part of our uh, mandate for the year of 2022. Oh, Mr Tan, you're mentioning uh, our star swimmers, Joseph Schooling, uh, Kwa Jung Wun, uh, likely to, or they're hoping to stay in elite sports while they are serving national service. Now, you mentioned uh, your plan was to work with the different ministries to see how this might be possible. Now, elite sports and any sports at elite level, it's very demanding. It's a full-time job. Now, how are you going to serve yeah. NS and still perform at elite level? Whatever you plan with the different ministries, do you see any real limitations in terms of having them train and compete effectively? You, you pose a really tough question. I think it's, it's, it's a true reality. We are at a stage where we are right now still on very infancy stages of where we are in terms of working with the ministries. I think there has been a long history of, and MINDEF has been actually very supportive along the way, but I think we do need to break a bit of the ice and actually go into a deeper realm where we can actually engage a bit more to be able to say, you know, let's bring our athletes out or even train in camps, in the camps where they are actually situated and actually maybe plant a, a coach there to be able to actually uh, work with them during their service and their appointments as well. So 
it's actually, I, I mean, you know, the, the idea has not been explored yet, but I think this is something that I would like to explore with the different ministries. And this is uh, MINDEF mainly, that is one thing that I want to do, especially with the boys like Joseph as well as Chen Wen and Jonathan Tan, who's also serving his national service as well. Gary, as you celebrate this appointment, we're mindful of the fact that you're also the first Singaporean to hold the top post since Ang Peng Siong left back in 2012. What signal do you think this sends to other local coaches? I, I do hope that this gives them an opportunity to know that there's someone uh, that, that has set the pathway for them and know that you know if you work hard to be able to get to where you are and actually continue to produce the results that you, you do with your swimmers, uh, there is a end of the, the there is a there is a, you know the final stage of of your career and that's actually the head coach position of Singapore swimming. I don't hope to to be in this position for the next uh, twenty to thirty years. I don't think I see myself in this role, but I do hope that someone comes through the ranks to be able to take over that position. And it and I hope it's a local boy or local girl. I think we do have to actually understand that actually we do need a lot more female coaches around. And I think this is one of the other mandates that I wish to push as well, that we do need to have stronger female coaches in the future. And we've been speaking to Gary Tan, Singapore's national swimming head coach.